What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another free recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video to help this get promoted by the YouTube algorithm. It means a ton to me when you guys do that. Now today we're going to be making a keto snickerdoodle cookie, which if you're not familiar is basically just a cinnamon and sugar coated sugar cookie. They're actually quite delicious and really easy to make. Now, as always, the full written recipe and macros will be down in the description box below. And if you guys have any suggestions for me in terms of uh, new things to convert to a keto recipe, whether they be entrees, desserts, snacks, go and let me know in the comment section so that I can really get to making your guys' ideas. Now with that, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So let's get right into things for our awesome keto snickerdoodles by starting with our dry ingredients, which are laid out in front of me right here. Now in this bowl, I have one stick or about 113 grams of softened butter. And I went ahead and did a little bit of whisking on there since I can't use an electric mixer on camera. Figured I'd get some of the work done ahead of time. In here, I have about 144 grams or three quarters of a cup of your favorite keto sweetener. Now the one that I'm using right here is a monk fruit and erythritol blend with a little bit of allulose blended in there as well. It's a blend of my own creation that I've been working on. People have been asking about using allulose in baking, so I wanted to give you an opportunity. But in this case, you can use pure allulose, you can use Lakanto, whatever you want. Just get about three quarters of a cup or roughly 144 grams of your favorite keto sweetener. Then I have one large egg and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I say this all the time, everybody, please buy a good vanilla extract. You're gonna love your recipes that much more. This is one is a Mexican vanilla that we uh, brought back from Mexico. So I love the flavor of uh, Mexican and Madagascar vanilla. Those are my two favorites. So now we're just gonna go ahead and combine all of this. If you have an electric mixer or hand mixer, uh, go ahead and use it, it works great. One thing I'm gonna say is this may start to separate a little bit. It's an interaction of the butter and the keto sweetener. It'll just look a little bit funny compared to what you're used to if you've just used to baking with sugar. That being said, it looks funny. It'll still work just fine. So let's get this mixed. And you can kind of see what I mean about it, it looks funny. If you look on the, along the edges there, you'll see a little bit of separation. Uh, totally fine, again, don't worry about it. Just wanted to warn you that that can happen and probably will. Now I'm gonna set my wet ingredients aside while I pull out my dry ingredients. Now in this slightly smaller mixing bowl, I'm going to start with my almond flour. Now this is one cup or about 112 grams of finely sifted almond flour. Then I have three tablespoons or about 21 grams of coconut flour. If you guys are familiar with my channel, you know I love blending the two. Give it a try and uh, you'll see why I like doing that. I feel like neither one of them are overpowering and it creates a great texture. Next up, we have half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. This is basically like replacing the gluten that would be in flour. It's how we make our baked goods stick together. We have a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now, I do get questions about this all the time. It's a really common baking ingredient here in America. You can find it in your normal spice aisle. It's just a dry acid. Some people ask me like where they can find it or what it's called in their country. If you're from a place that does not call it cream of tartar and you know what it's called, just leave a comment say, uh, in the comment section saying, hey, I live in X country and we call it this. I think that'll help out a lot of people since uh, it seems to be an ingredient that a lot of my international viewers aren't familiar with. I know you guys have to have it, I just don't know what they call it. So anyway, three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And lastly, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, this is baking soda, they're not interchangeable. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our whisk and uh, just combine this until everything looks well distributed. Now that we're done mixing our dry ingredients, we're gonna slowly add our dry ingredients into our wet ingredient bowl. I like to do this in about three batches and just make sure you whisk it pretty well in between batches. So there we have it, this is our snickerdoodle dough. Now I'm gonna set this aside for just a few minutes while I go ahead and make the coating, which is just a cinnamon and sugar blend. And I'll go ahead and get our baking sheet lined with parchment paper as well. So just let this chill for a minute so the coconut flour can absorb some of that moisture. And I'll be right back with the next step of this recipe. Well, I'm back and you may have noticed things have changed right here. And now it'd also be a good time to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 175 degrees Celsius. Now on this plate, I have two teaspoons of cinnamon and two tablespoons of your favorite keto sweetener. Just take a fork and mix them together. This is going to be our snickerdoodle topping. Now this recipe can make between 12 and 13 cookies depending on the size of the cookie you're making, but the process is really simple if you've never done this before. Make a ball of dough, 
roll it around in the cinnamon sugar blend, and then just kind of press it down lightly on the cookie sheet. So let me show you how to do one. As a note, this is going to be a kind of a stickier dough, so you don't apply a lot of pressure to it. And just like that, it will spread out quite a bit, but you wanna push down the top so you don't have a little bit of a dome shape. Now I'm gonna finish up the rest of these and I will uh, catch up with you guys right before I put them in the oven. Now I like to stick to about six on a tray, so this is one is ready and I have enough dough to go ahead and make my second tray. But once your cookies are ready to go into the oven, go ahead and put them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, which is about 175 degrees Celsius, for between 12 and 14 minutes. You do not wanna overcook these things, so right when you see the edges starting to get a little golden brown, Go ahead and pull them out. And then you're going to wait for them to become completely cool before moving them. When keto baked goods are warm, they're very uh, brittle and fall apart. Once they cool down, they're a lot more stable. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven, put the finished product up on the screen right now, and then I will catch up with you all for the taste test. Well, now that you guys have seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. So I have right here one of my delicious looking snickerdoodle cookies. As you can see, they hold up pretty well. And uh, let's give it a bite. Now these things are awesome. I do like mine a little bit more on the cinnamony side. So if you guys want less cinnamon, you could back it down a little bit, but for me, this is the perfect amount of cinnamon. It is sweet, it is buttery. I absolutely love these cookies. It is everything that I want in that kind of quick little keto snack. And of course, the texture of these things is awesome. Texture is a huge thing for me, and whether it be keto or not, I try to get it as close to the real thing as possible so that you guys out there aren't missing any of the treats that you had before you started this keto diet. Now, as always, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not done so yet. Like this video if you like it. And if you have any questions, comments, anything like that for me, leave them down in the comment section below. And with that, I will see you in the next one.